was in there, then I can go back on up. And notice you, you down here, most software actually has the line items. So this is 2B, uh, two, you know, uh, 2A, 2B, 2C that line up to the boxes so that at least you can plug that information into the software and then work backwards to try to understand and make sure the software is doing the data input correctly. So software is quite useful with that, but uh, oftentimes you're gonna have to explain what's going on to two people and you wanna double check the software. And so if I go back on over and say, okay, now the tricky thing with that is that now I had to put it in place here, but it's actually creating a schedule D or it's pulling in or it's coming in to the capital gains. So now I've got basically capital gain distribution, which oftentimes is reported on the schedule D if you needed the worksheet. We'll talk about that later. The, the reason that becomes an issue with data input though is because oftentimes you try to organize all of your worksheets and you're trying to organize when you're double checking your numbers, the dividend worksheets from the interest worksheets from the capital gains distributions and so on. And it's difficult to do that when you have capital gains on the 1099 div, because when you're trying to, when you're trying to double check your capital gains, then you have to take into account, oh, wait, there's this added thing that's on the dividend, which was a gain distribution on the dividend when you're trying to double check your numbers, possibly populating that information into Excel to double check uh, your numbers. So, so remember that the 1099 div, the 1099 interest, and the capital gain distributions often are done by the same financial institutions because people have their investments in uh, cash in the checking account where they might have interest, bonds, and stocks, also possibly with the same financial institution. And the interest represents income from bonds and uh, money and holding CDs, savings accounts. The dividend represents income from capital gains. So you might have one statement that basically has all that stuff included uh, within it. Also, if you have flow through entities like a partnership or, or uh, uh, an S corporation, then even if you don't do the partnership or S corporation, you might just say, I'll, I, I will input the K1s or something like that if someone else does the partnership or S corporation. We have courses on partnership or S corp if you wanna look at that in more detail, but it's a whole thing. Uh, in and of itself, we will touch on some of the stuff for a sole proprietorship with a Schedule C. But if you have if you have that if you have a, a K1, then again entering the K1 is usually fairly straightforward because all the boxes line up pretty nicely. But then you again could have income related to dividends or capital gains and whatnot that are flowing through from a different source other than the normal 1099 div. So that's the general so that's the general scenario with the dividends.